So the Fulami worm arrived from the Americas about two years ago to Africa. It's a new pest and it feeds in many crop uh, species uh, in Africa, but it mainly feeds on maize. And so main concern is that most maize produced in Africa is produced by smallholders and it's a source of food security. So it's affecting, it's already infested because it's arrived two years ago, but spread very quickly across the whole continent, sub-Saharan continent, and now it's infesting tens of millions of hectares of maize. And again, these are small holders who depend on this maize for their food security. So the threat is real that if left unmanaged, it can seriously affect food security of tens of millions of whole, small holders, let alone food security of those who live in the cities also who depend on that maize production locally. So it's quite a serious threat. So what the guide does, is two things. One looks at specific practices, specific concepts, principles that farmers have to understand so they can manage the fallen worm well, such things as biological control. So in Africa already, we've seen, we know, that there are important uh, natural enemies of the fallen worm that naturally control the, the fallen worm. And these natural enemies include other insects like ants, which are predators. They go and crawl up and eat the larva include parasites, which go and parasitize the larvae, and include pathogens, bacteria, fungus, virus, which kill the uh, fall worm. So these natural enemies are already in the environment in Africa. Some may be missing. Some of the specialists may have been left behind in the Americas. But there are enough present that farmers should go to the field and understand, first they have to understand the basic biology <clears throat> and ecology of the fallen worm. They have to understand that the larva is one stage, the egg is another stage, the adult moth is another, understand the cycle, uh, understand what part, of, what part of the stage affects their maize plant, um, and understand that it's their feeding and where they feed, but also understand this complex of natural enemies. Another key concept is plant diversity. So besides biological control, which controls it, plant diversity is very important because fallen worm, when the moth, the female, comes to lay her eggs, she looks for maize plants. But if she comes to a plot that's confusing her because there's a mixture of plants there, she may not find the maize plants and may not lay her eggs on the maize because she's confused by these other plants. These smallholders, the tens of millions of smallholder maize farmers in Africa, the vast majority don't apply any insecticide on their maize fields. Why? Basically because they can't afford to because it's used for self-consumption, a small plot of land, they eat that maize. They may sell a little bit, but the price they receive for that sale is so low that they can't justify economically buying inputs. So they don't buy insecticides. More importantly, of course, the potential human health hazards of these pesticides. So we give pesticides to farmers who have no experience in using them. They don't know how to use them safely. And the other problem is that some of them are not safe. Some of the pesticides being given away uh, today are older chemicals that have known human health effects. We have a wonderful guide now, but now the question is getting this out to the field. And FAO, we are planning a series of four sub-regional workshops to train master trainers so that they're trained in the guide, the approach. Uh, but then they have to go back to their countries and plug in to a system, sometimes supported by FAO projects, sometimes supported by the national governments, to do massive training. Because the guide is, is pretty, but the real end of the day, we have to get farmers that education, that experience in farmers, so they go out and practice it. And it's a massive job. So I think the other point is that we need a massive investment in farmer fuel schools using the guide at those different levels, master trainers regionally, and then in the countries. And we're looking for support from First national programs, governments have been very supportive of this, but we also obviously need support from donors and others to uh, supply the inputs that we need to run these farmer fuel schools.